It was a synergistic effort that we got one trial launched and now we have three more that we're considering. We describe it as, you know, uh, pressure is a privilege. You know, now that uh, we're under this tight crunch, it's just hopefully making us very productive in a way that we can help our patients. In the case of COVID, the question is, are there any drugs on the market that may just serendipitously and very luckily be useful against COVID? And we found some computational evidence. These drugs may bind and block the ability of the virus to get into cells. This really awesome team from my lab kind of dropped everything else they were doing and started working on modeling transmission dynamics of COVID-19. I pulled data from air quality monitors, measured the substantial improvement in air quality in places like China. Air quality improved 20%. And then I tried to measure the health impacts or the health benefits of those improvements in air quality. It turns out they're quite large. We created a computer model that basically uses mobility data to simulate the spread of infection of COVID-19. Our main insight in this research was to use anonymized large-scale data coming from cell phones. The concept is to adapt a full-face snorkel mask to interface with an existing supply of rated filters. On the face of it, it wouldn't have necessarily seemed like a great fit for online learning because it's focused on hands-on material culture collections. We were lucky in that we had our 3D models already made so they could start working with those in 3D. historical precedents of how hard it is to not just develop a vaccine that's safe and effective, but how to scale it up and just manage the logistics of mass vaccination campaigns. It can take decades. We're trying to do it in the space of 12 months. There are 11 million children in the U.S. alone who do not have their own laptop or computer a suitable device for learning at home. In April, during remote schooling, we came together and started building Bridging Tech from the ground up. We started with Hamilton Family Shelter in San Francisco. We have expanded to many cities, especially in the last three months. We are in Boston, in DC, Los Angeles, in New York, in Atlanta, and the list continues to grow. Ultimately, the goal of Bridging Tech is to improve children's education and to ensure that children's education is equitable. It's really scary what's happening. People in the U.S. are going to go hungry this year. There's no question. You, we want to help and we want to try to figure out, like, is there something we can do? This is such a big problem, like, which is we just need to do something. You know, if I need to go rent a truck, I'll go rent a truck. I'll go drive to the farm and just bring it to our local food bank. And that was kind of the start of this that really got it going. We found an egg ranch that had surplus eggs. We talked to our local food bank who really needed eggs, so we rented a you know refrigerated truck and just drove to the farm, picked up the eggs, and delivered it to the food bank. Seeing all these people come together, it's incredibly inspiring, and it's hard not to feel hopeful when every day you're being exposed to that. The Healthy Elections Project started to try to stand up an organization that would be laser focused on helping local election officials adapt to the pandemic. I hope to be able to return to Stanford in person, connect with all the people and places that make it such an amazing place. I hope our break from being on campus is over before too long. My wish for all of us is that we stay hopeful. In the words of the late Travis Roy, sometimes we choose our challenges and sometimes our challenges choose us. It is what we do in the face of those challenges that defines who we are, and more importantly, who we will become.